Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to our garden. It is time for a garden update. We are going to go through the garden thoroughly today and there's a lot that's changing in here and I am so excited. I wasn't gonna do a garden update for a few weeks, but things have been changing so rapidly in here. It's just time, it's time. There's probably gonna be more of these than I thought. <laughs> but that's okay because I am still obsessed with gardening and in here every single day, changing things, adding things and doing things. There is plenty to talk about. I'm gonna give you a tour of the current situation, what will plants look like. We're getting more flowers, more plants. Things have started growing and sprouting that have been planted. There's a little sneak peek here at some furniture that's maybe being added. Just a lot of good stuff. So we're gonna jump into that straight away but before we do I just wanted to take a quick moment to thank today's sponsor because this video is very kindly sponsored by Holtz Cairn. I've talked about them quite a few times on my channel already but I do absolutely adore them. They are an Austrian brand Vienna based and they make accessories out of wood and stone and other natural materials. Absolutely stunning and very unique pieces of jewelry. They make watches, gorgeous watches, sunglasses, handbags. In fact I have one of their handbags here. I just I, I I keep talking about this, but I just think this is the coolest thing ever. <laughs> Wooden handbag. It has become my go-to whenever I go out and I need to bring a couple small things. I do it in this handbag. It is 100% wood on vegan leather and this is not the, you know, pleather faux plastic stuff. This is a new engineered material. So yeah, this is now my go-to going out bag and I am wearing some of their jewelry today as well. I'm wearing the beautiful walnut hexagon necklace as well as the Morse code bracelet that spells love. Um, with the alternating gold and walnut beads. I absolutely love this. I also have a watch from them and you've seen me wear this many times before, but it's absolutely stunning and it's made of walnut as well. A really, really cool design with a <laughs> the birds are loud today. <laughs> with a bracelet type band, absolutely love that. Actually during the first half of June, Holtzkern are working with the Jane Goodall Institute, uh, which is an NGO that focuses on forest preservation. There will be a 10% discount across the entire website and an additional 5% of your purchase will be donated to the Jane Goodall Institute. So that is really cool. There will be more information about that on their website once that starts. But until then, you can still use my discount code, which is code loopsy 15 and that gets you 15% off of anything on the website. So I will have a link to their website in the description box below. It's definitely worth checking out if you're looking for some gorgeous unique pieces of jewelry or other accessories for yourself or for a loved one. A huge thank you to Holtzkern for sponsoring this video. And without further ado, let's get to gardening. Time for a garden update. We keep doing little things here and there and I keep forgetting to grab my camera. So I'm just gonna walk you through all the changes we've made up to now. And from now on, I'm gonna be better about this and actually pick up my camera every time I do something in here. What's happened since the last time you were here? It's only been three weeks, I think, since I did my last tour, but so much has changed. This garden is coming to life and it's incredible. The jasmine is growing so well and I am so excited. So is the lavender. So this whole thing seems to be thriving. And I'm very, very happy about that. Can't wait for this to start blooming. It's preparing lots of blooms, but they haven't popped yet. Gonna have to be patient. This plant, which was white when I planted it, is now lilac, <laughs> which is uh, funny. I don't mind it, obviously. This goes with my color scheme. That one kind of died and came back to life, so I guess that's good. This still looks great. Very happy with those. And now take a look at the actual garden. Do you even recognize it anymore? The difference in here is just gigantic. Let me walk you through the plants actually that we have here. So obviously I planted this, uh, which seems to be growing nicely and spreading out. It's a crawling plant, so I'm hoping it'll cover some ground here. My goji berry, this, this here is a goji berry plant and it's not doing the best. I left it in the pot too long. I should have planted it sooner. I think I just have to wait for this one to establish itself. I'm not expecting any fruit this year in any case, but it's still alive, so that's a good thing, I guess. Uh, the snails really love this one, which is a bit of a problem. This branch has been, oh, whoops, spider, uh, has been almost completely eaten, and so are most of the lower leaves are just eaten. Snails are a problem in here in general. We've had a very wet and cool spring, so there are so many snails. 
They have also gotten into my herbs here. You can see they're all shiny from the slime. Yeah, the snails love my herbs, which is also... Not, not the thyme. They leave the thyme alone, but the lemon balm. You can see it's all eaten um, and the mint especially. They love my mint. So I decided to raise that with one of these plant stands. It seems to be working. This is not very comfortable for them to climb onto. So I think I'm gonna buy some more of those and raise my lemon balm as well. So that's the status on my herbs. Then I bought these little flowers. I'm not sure what these are called. I don't think they had a name on the pot that I got them in, but they have been wonderful. They bloom for so long and they just keep making more flowers. And it's a fairly inconspicuous plant but it does so much for the way this garden looks and feels because it's one of the few things that are blooming already right now and they're in a quite a prominent position so yeah really love these surprisingly here i have a sea of weeds and a part of me hopes and thinks believes that these will bloom at some point i didn't plant any of these and we have them popping up everywhere i'm letting it happen this year um just to cover the soil but if they don't bloom, I'm definitely ripping all of them out. <laughs> Just gonna have to wait. Um, I have faith. I have faith that the flowers will pop out of these. That over there is about ready to pop. I'm not entirely sure what it is. I don't remember from last year. I do remember that it blooms. So yeah, that's a, that's a perennial that the previous owners planted in here. My pear tree has just about doubled in size. This thing is making so many new branches look at it this is all a new branch all of this is a new branch just absolutely exploded my pear by the way my one baby pear got eaten it's it's not here anymore i checked on it every single morning and one day it was just gone <laughs> for a while there i could still see where it was where it had been attached but it has grown so much now i don't think i'll be able to find the spot anymore oh here i think yeah it was right here but uh, yeah, one morning it was just gone. I think a bird must have eaten it. <laughs> it's okay. At least I know it can produce fruits. So very happy with that. It brings a lot of life into the garden. My California lilac is starting to bloom. Absolutely gorgeous. Cannot wait for that to grow nice and big. I'm very excited. My irises over there are also very eaten. I think snails love those as well. That one did bloom and it's a lovely lovely deep dark purple very beautiful i got these from my grandma's garden and yeah they were doing great but i think yeah they are just shredded so i think the snails must have gotten to those as well which is unfortunate that there's so many of them my other california lilac the blue one is also blooming very very nicely that is gonna bloom soon i'm sure another perennial i don't remember what it is currently i will have to see what flowers pop out of that my viburnum here uh is a little bit disappointing i'm not sure what happened here maybe it didn't get enough water maybe it's just focusing on making roots rather than blooms but it the the flowers wilted very quickly on this much sooner than uh, the other ones they that people have in their gardens around the neighborhood here so yeah i'm just gonna have to wait to see what that does next year but they slowly turned pink and now they are just done blooming my rhododendron oh my gosh it's already starting to wilt a little bit but this is just the most stunning plant completely covered in light pink flowers the flowers come out like they come out of the buds this very vibrant bright pink and then they open into a softer pink like that's a freshly opened one and then they slowly turn more and more white until they uh, wilt and go kind of brown like that but absolutely stunning and actually this seeing this in the garden here has made me decide to add more pink to this garden that rhododendron and there's another one back there they are pink as well and i actually think pink does go pretty nicely with the purple and the whites that i have so i'm just embracing the pink and adding some more pink here and there uh, i think it actually goes with the color scheme that's the hosta that i planted which is a little bit snailed but surviving <laughs> at least it came up those are snails love hostas so yeah i'm actually surprised it grew that big oh and you can kind of see some sprouts popping up here those are from the seed mix that i sowed so still waiting for those to develop a little bit more we have this big guy this is a surprise plant 
I didn't plant this one so I didn't know what color it'd be but as long as it's a very soft pastel yellow like this I'm okay with it it's definitely um, more beautiful than the color is bothersome so I'm definitely leaving it the snails have gotten to it it is tattered at the bottom but still blooming so that's good I planted a clematis here which has beautiful large white flowers with purpley pink centers so I'm gonna try and have that trail along the fence here down the center in between the two trees I think that would be gorgeous just to kind of cover this up a little here I have more surprise flowers as I like to call them but leaving those because I feel like those are gearing up to be beautiful here I sowed a lot of those seeds and we do have some seedlings popping up here which is so exciting and I can't wait. I'm hoping for a lot of flocks and just all the beautiful purple flowers. In my little planters here, this is just thriving as well, growing really nice and big and keeps flowering, which is gorgeous. My violets are doing great as well. And the trees, guys. <gasps> Look at those. The leaves have come in and they are stunning and I'm just so excited to see this coming to life and it is exactly what I had hoped for. I feel like once the screens are completely covered it's going to be fantastic. It's going to just hide the view from the neighbors in the back and be absolutely gorgeous. So I'm really excited that those are still doing good. More surprise flowers there that are yellow but I'm leaving them. <laughs> as long as it's not red I'm okay with pretty much anything. Those are my lilies of the valley. No flowers yet, but they are coming up. And this, oh, this is new. I hadn't actually noticed this yet. Oh, look at that. Cute little heart flowers. Oh, I love those. That is adorable. So yeah, that is new. I hadn't noticed that at all yet, actually. But yeah, really, really nice. So we finally have some color in this shadow border here. I also, of course, bought more plants. Looking out from the house, the garden was very asymmetrical. Everything is happening on the left side because that's where we get sun and the, the right side, like from the house out, is completely empty. Like it's just the ivy wall and then here uh, the wooden shed. So I decided to get some pots and to get some roses to put down there. And this is the little arrangement that I arrived at. I have in front here, this is an Olivia Rose Austin. Yeah, Olivia Rose Austin, which is absolutely stunning. It's gonna, this one's gonna open soon. They are like a cool pink and a very full bloom, just absolutely gorgeous. And this one here, let me actually show you from this side works better on camera so that's the olivia rose austin and this one was labeled as schneewittchen so snow white and it's yeah it's it's a very common white rose but it's on a stem so it's nice and decorative there i also transplanted my rosemary because the time was crowding it out that was just too much in one planter so that ended up here i went for terracotta pots and um like three different ones i want to collect a bunch of terracotta pots and just have them all around here i think that would look really cute and then i raised the bird bath on another <laughs> upside down terracotta pot because i didn't have a plant for it yet but yeah, that's my little pot arrangement here. Now I do know that roses need a little bit more space, so I just, I'm gonna see where we land with the planters. Maybe it will work, maybe it won't, and if it doesn't, I can just transplant them next year. But I wanna try in any case. Um, also, <laughs> if you look at it from here, they are a bit further towards the back. I had them up here first, but then I realized that this area gets zero sun hours like no sun at all throughout the day the shadow remains there because the sun moves over there so um there's no sun here ever and roses need sun so at least partial sun <laughs> so i move them all the way up to the front because in the morning the sun like the shade goes like this and they are they, they get a couple hours of sun in the morning it's afternoon now and there's still a little bit of sun on the schneewittchen there so yeah that's a better spot for them they get partial sun there and uh, for here i just maybe i can put down something decorative here and i uh, just add a couple more planters there with some plants that do okay in the shade the roses ended up on the corner and i still think that they look fantastic and help to kind of balance out the plants a little bit like the, now you have something happening on that side as well which was necessary i'm actually about to head to the 
garden center again because I want to buy some mulch. Um, it's been fairly dry out. Let me just oh, get inside for a bit. It's been fairly dry out the past couple of days. I, I'm worried about my new trees. Like the the pear and especially the beeches, they haven't established roots yet. They're so new here. Um, and I'm worried that the soil is going to dry out. We have very thick clay soil. So when it's dry for a couple of days, it just cracks and it worries me a little bit. So what I want to do today is go out into the garden center and buy some mulch. I don't have any material to make my own yet because this garden was fairly empty when we got here. I might be able to turn some leaves into mulch next year, but for now I have to buy some. So I think I'm going to buy some tree bark and use that as mulch just around the trees and like the bigger plants. I want to make sure that I leave some soil open for all the plants that I that, that are seeded um, and I'm still waiting for them to pop up but around some of the established plants I think I just want to mulch a little bit to just help the soil retain some moisture. Fingers crossed. Hope that that works. <laughs> I'm back, let's do a little haul. I got my bark mulch that I set out for, but I also got a little bit more than that. <laughs> I ended up getting three more terracotta pots with some shadow plants that can hopefully thrive in this area. I got a purple one and a white one. So I'm planning to put those together and hope they spread a little maybe um, in one of the larger pots I got lemon verbena that's gonna go with my herbs so I can make more varieties of tea. Another pot here, I got some anemone, anemone, anemone. Another flowering shade plant. These are obviously uh, woodland plants, so they will grow in the shade. And a blooming hosta that has beautiful purple flowers as well. And it's just starting to pop up. So I'm gonna plant those here. Three little pots for those. I think that should be enough. And then I finally found a raspberry. I had been looking for raspberries for a while, but I couldn't find any. And now I finally found them. So yeah, I'm gonna plant my raspberry probably somewhere around there. Uh, Cause that gets a lot of sunlight. Let's get to it straight away. I love this. I love how there's something going on over there now and just balances the whole thing out perfectly. And I cannot wait for these to grow nice and tall and just be beautiful. Yeah, very happy with this choice. And I think I'm gonna slowly but surely continue that collection of <laughs> terracotta pots with shadowy plants then all along this wall. I think it looks great. Very fun. I love it. One final thing I want to do today. Furniture, patio furniture, outdoor furniture. We have our little uh, seating area back there, right there with the bench and the hanging chair. We've decided not to get a second bench for now because we feel like there wouldn't really be a use for it at the moment. We don't often sit out here with that many people and we have another chair in the same line as the bench that we had on our balcony that we can just put down if we have more people over. But what we do need is a table, some kind of table to put drinks on and stuff. So um, we were looking for one and then we realized we have pretty much the perfect table to use for that. I don't know if you remember back when we first moved into our apartment in Amsterdam, we had these two round coffee tables and we got rid of them or <laughs> got rid of them fairly quickly because they were wobbly and one of the legs kept falling off. 
but we did actually keep it. We had it in our storage downstairs. We are now going to refurbish it and use it as our outdoor coffee table. Robert stained the tabletop. It used to be a very light wood. We used the same stain that we used on the bench. It's the same stain that was used for this and I also used that for this so it's all the same color. It's the stain that IKEA used to sell when they still had this range of furniture which they don't anymore so I can't get any more of it which is unfortunate. <laughs> it's just a very nice dark wood stain, warm dark and warm so we use that on this to make it um, suitable for the outdoors and I was just about to attach the legs back on with better screws and use it outside I think it's gonna be absolutely perfect Bloom update, the weather has been so amazing. A bit too dry though, I've had to water a lot out here and I think I maybe should water even more. Both of my roses, here is my Olivia. Stunning, absolutely stunning and it's still not fully open and I wish you guys could smell this because it's incredible. And also my Snow White Rose has opened as of this morning. When I did my little morning round, it was still closed and now it's opened couple hours later gorgeous I do hope this one will darken a little because they're very similar in color right now and they should be different but that's okay also this one has opened <gasps> absolutely love it it is so big and gorgeous I also realized I'm a total dummy because that is literally the plant that I bought <laughs> it's the exact same one and I have a whole patch of them there like five or six of them at least also this is a foxglove I'm a bit worried though because that place where it just spontaneously popped up is the sunniest place in the garden pretty much and it is advertised as a shadow plant so yeah we'll see we'll see how it does um, I could have known because the leaves are very similar just that one is a lot older but oh well I don't have any purple ones I think um, since the one back there is this exact one the white one we'll see we'll see <laughs> feeling a bit silly because I could have just dug one up and planted it here but that's okay it's beautiful this plant has completely popped and look at these flowers these are so fairy-esque the little hearts and like winged hearts incredible I love this one this is one of the bulbs that I planted adore it, it was a great choice I hope it spreads and I get more of these because I love them oh you may have noticed these pebbles around some of my plants those are supposed to deter snails, <laughs> make it first of all harder for them to, you know, cross the surface. But also these are very dusty pebbles, I think just because of the type of stone, which makes it extra unpleasant for snails to crawl across. So I just put those around my hosta and also my herbs here. Um, and I have another hosta back there that I also did this with. And so far it seems to be working really well. No snail has entered here yet i think it looks completely fine and uneaten if this works that would be fantastic i want to try all of the kind of gentle deterrence before i you know move on to more drastic measures that they keep eating all of my plants but i would love for this to work this garage door we hate it and we're looking at getting this replaced with just wooden double doors that open like normal doors because this is physically challenging <laughs> to get into and we use this all the time because our bikes are in there so yeah we're looking at getting that replaced eventually but until then i want to paint this black i want to use the same paint that i used on there uh whatever is left of it and paint this i hope i have enough of it left but if i don't i'll just go out and buy some more and that is my task for today so i'm just gonna tape off the edges and get started with that shouldn't take too long i think and i do think it'll make a big impact in this space
I don't know why I keep thinking that these things will be fast. Why am I zoomed in? Because they never are. Um, but it's done. The whole thing is black. And I think it looks great. I just need to peel off the tape. I'm waiting for it to dry down a little. And then, yeah, it's gonna be done. I think, I do think it looks better like this. It's much more modern, cleaner, obviously. And um, yeah, I just hope that it'll disappear into the background a little bit more like this. But we are getting it replaced for sure. Anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. One last thing I want to do out here before I end for today <laughs> is to hang these lights. I've been wanting to do this for a while now and I think now's the time. Now that things are cleaned up and looking good. So I'm just gonna see if I can find suitable places to attach this to and how far it'll even stretch. But yeah, let's do it. I think it's gonna look great. Now that is adorable. I love how many times I was able to go back and forth. I think this is gonna look really fun and cozy when it's dark out. I'm actually thinking of putting this on a timer so that it automatically turns on when the sun goes down and then turns off a few hours later. I think that could be really cute. So yeah, I'll probably try it out and see how that works. If I like it, but so far, absolutely love this. Does it look like my drawing yet? I actually think it does. I think it looks a lot like my drawing and I am so excited because I absolutely love that. I love it. I cannot even begin to tell you how happy I am in this garden. <laughs> it is shaping up so much like I envisioned it. And of course, it's gonna take years for all the plants to establish and grow bigger and um, grow into their full potential. But already after just one season, it's looking so good. And I'm so hopeful. I can't wait for my pear to grow nice and big and my California lilacs and of course for the beaches to fill in. I'm also going to be planting more as the season progresses. I like to go back to the garden center every couple of weeks to just see what new plants are blooming at the moment because uh, I feel like if I do that then that way I can ensure that there will be something blooming for the entire season like from spring to autumn um, and there will be some interest in this garden kind of almost year round. Also taking note of when things start and stop blooming. I'm thinking of starting a notebook in general where I just jot down what plants I have and what their specific care needs are, uh, where they're planted, how many there are of them and things like that like when they bloom, if they need pruning, when they need pruning, how they need pruning. I think that would be really helpful. Other things we still need to do is of course move the bins, the garbage bins into the garage. We have almost emptied that out. I have sold all of the larger things that were in there. We had our set of dining chairs from the apartment, the dishwasher from the old kitchen. I um, gave that away and there were some other smaller things that I've either sold or given away on 
online. So it's all sorted. There's now a pile of stuff that we need to bring <laughs> to the recycling center. So once we've done that, we can put the bins inside and we can remove more tiles and plant more you know like against the house in that area yeah there is plenty to do still and lots more material for more videos so if you guys enjoy these i really hope you do because i really enjoy making them <laughs> please do let me know i would love to do more gardening videos and updates for you guys for now thank you so much for watching i really hope you enjoyed this if you did be sure to give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see how this progresses and all of the other stuff that i'm up to of course don't forget to check out holtzkern through the link in the description box below they make absolutely beautiful beautiful accessories there is another video here that i think you might also enjoy you can go watch next thank you so much for watching guys and i will see you very soon in my next video bye